appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 40. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest for episode 40. Ladies, introduce yourself to the audience. Hello. Hello. We are the Underground Queens, and I am Kiana. And I'm Kiara. Ladies, uh, let the listeners know where you're coming from. International Hype is one of the hashtags we like to use here on the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Yes, we are a podcast. Um, we are a Southern-based podcast. We um, grew up in Mississippi, so I'm currently still residing in Mississippi. And I reside in Atlanta, but I grew up in Mississippi as well. Blood born in Alabama. They neck and neck, but we are Southern girls. Yeah. Copy that. So you got me into another market. Uh, shouts out to Mississippi. <laughs> My man, Jock Johnson in the gang. <laughs> uh, got some Mississippi roots down there. Uh, okay, go through the rundown now. H two H Cleaning. Follow me. Follow my cleaning company at H two H Cleaning on Instagram. Follow Custom Hustle Jerseys as my clothing line. You pick the number. You pick the names on the front and the size. I got them from the kids to the adults. Out of town, cost you a little more for your shipping and handling. Out of country, cost you a little more for shipping and handling. But H two H Cleaning and Custom Hustle Jerseys is my other two pages. They in the bio of uh, at I am hype on Instagram. Uh, okay, rundown of the radio stations. Now, Mondays, 2 o'clock every Monday on the E-Block Radio Network. 2 o'clock every Monday on the E-Block Radio Network. Uh, Tuesdays, GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock. Wednesdays is, goddamn, I'm messing this one up, Ryan. The Kickback app, 8 a.m., 8 uh, p.m., Central Standard Time. Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com at 1230. Fridays, the I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m. And Saturdays, the THC Radio Network, 10 a.m. as well. Also, wristbands are available. They're free with any purchase from Custom Hustle jerseys, and they're also available to be purchased on their own $2 a piece. Okay, ladies, a lot of rundown. Also, damn, I forgot about this one. How to Hustle Seminars. How to Hustle Seminars are now in, run, up and running. Uh, it'll be a five-week course. You get with me. It'll be five different... Uh, Five different sessions about different ways to improve your podcast, your marketing, uh, your hashtags, the importance of building relationships, all of those fun facts. And live Q&A if you're a person that's live. If you don't get it on live, then you can be sold to archives like everybody else. Okay, ladies. <laughs> um, no, my rundown is long in the beginning, but that's what happens when you're busy because this is how you hustle. <laughs> um, get it after. All right. Now, ladies, uh, topic for episode 40. Physically unavailable or emotionally unavailable, which one is worse? We always let the guests go first here on the How to Hustle podcast. Ooh, physically unavailable or or emotionally unavailable. So physically, we're talking about as in like... You ain't giving it up. (laughs) (laughs) Physically, he is not available as far as you can't get what you need and you also physically don't have enough time with him. Right. And emotionally unavailable is, you know, y'all can't have those kind of conversations that you need to have. You can't make the emotional connection that you need to make with your man. So now you're talking to Lamar down the street about why you like BMF so much or power or things of that sort. Wait, wait, wait. So physically unavailable, that's just sex based? That ain't just like he in a wheelchair? No, no, no. I said physically, he could just be physically. He doesn't know how to balance work and home. Oh, okay. He's physically okay. unavailable. It right. could be that you're just not getting what you need, right? Or he's just physically not there. Gotcha. Or okay. Emotionally, he's just not up to par. He's not up to standards. Like I said, you can't really hold a decent conversation with him. He can't talk to you about saving no money and let's build for the future. Got you. Got you. Okay. Okay. It's so hard because those are two very important things. Because is, is it that hard? hard? I That's think why you come so to how to hustle podcast for those tough decisions. For me, it's got to be, I think emotionally, being emotionally unavailable is worse to me because you think of emotions or feelings and I'm just thinking about the people that I love. Like, how can I be there physically for someone if I don't emotionally care about them? 
you know, that's what's going to get me to want to show up for you or be there for you physically. If I have some kind of connection to you, you know, emotionally is like with the heart. So I feel like if a person is not there for you emotionally, then they're not going to be there for you physically. So emotionally for me, what you think, Key? It's really, really hard. Key thinks it's hard. She's doing a little parenting right now. We also had a video available now because of the E-Block Radio Network. You can watch the videos now at How to Hustle Podcast. Since she's parenting, I'll jump in right here for you. It has to be the uh, it has to be the uh, emotionally unavailable, because uh, if the person is tapped out emotionally, then it's no relationship really there. Like they could be physically present with you, but they just not even they're not getting they've given any effort. They're not putting any time into trying to work anything out. They're not trying to build this relationship. They just y'all at that point are just co-parents if you got kids, or y'all just roommates if y'all live together. Because exactly. you've already tapped out on the situation, you've given up, and I mean, it's, it's kind of, it, like you said, it's a bit of a difficult one because then, right. like you said, you ain't getting what you need is still bad. But if you're emotionally tapped out and you're emotionally not available, unable to hold a def- decent conversation, then we got a problem. If it was that hard, though, why would people still be with people that are physically unavailable? I feel you know, like he's unavailable, but he's financially uh, stabilizing the situation. Exactly. So it's hard. It's it is. I feel like it's a tough battle because it's like you know you like okay, well I'm in the um comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. in a financial place where we need to be. I'm in a place where it's like you know it's kind of like okay, he could be more emotionally there, but at the same time. I still go to the same places I go to. I still buy the same things that I need. I still live in the same house. I maintain that same lifestyle when you could be, you know, be with somebody that's more emotional, emotionally available. And it's like, there's not that, that, that comfort, you know what I'm saying? I mean, And then some women stay with men. Go ahead. I was just saying some women stay with men like that. You know, they just kind of get to this realization where like, this is, this is the cap for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to just put up with him not being physically there. Um, and yeah, I just feel like it's just, it seems like an easy pick for like what's worse, you know, will be physically not being there. But if it was that easy, then why do women stay or men stay in that predicament longer? It's not easy because some people are the type of person that doesn't like to be alone. Some people feel like they have to have somebody to be with. They could be in a bad relationship. They could be in a toxic relationship. They could be in an abusive relationship. That could be for the male or the female, but they just don't want to be alone. They feel like they're never going to be able to do better than this person because this person is probably mentally already fucked you. And you don't even recognize that you are solely dependent upon this person because you feel they know like they plan on your insecurities as far as not wanting to be alone. So for some people, it might be like, this is a glaring, it's obvious for me that it's being alone. For some people, it'll be like, if we can't talk and we can't come to that emotional connection, because the emotional connection is the part that plays on your heart and all of that. It's not really the physical. Eventually, the physical is going to go. I mean, after you've done it so many times, it ain't no new way y'all going to do it. Like That's right. (laughs) Emotionally, you'll be able to find different ways to love and care about each other as long as y'all still growing together as one instead of individually. That's right. It's, it's all about the connection there. Like if you have a connection, I feel like a connection that's st- so strong, like it can never die. And you'll always have that for your relationship. Like, like you said, like physical stuff, it gets old, you know, you can't depend on that, but it's about that connection. And then being emotionally unavailable, th- I can't do that because I need to hear certain affirmations. Like I love you, you know, I care about you, this and that. You know like, how I feel. That. Niggas will hit you with that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know how I feel about you. <laughs> but I need to hear those things. And then I also need the physical as well to match the emotion. So these are two. It's just, it's it's hard. I need both. Both of them. I think we all need both. But which one is worse than that happen? I think, like you said, physically is, I mean, emotionally is worse to not have. Because if you think about it, even like 
um, relationships that start in prison or like prison love or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. That's basically all you get is emotional. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That emotional connection, that that love connection. And it's like, how you be in a relationship with somebody that's in prison, you know? That's not and true, yeah. And just like oh, they... <laughs> that's true. Oh, they hold it shout out to all my brothers that's locked up, man. <laughs> oh, this show jumps in love too. They need love too. Oh, no, I mean, shit. Hey, the niggas all know hype is the one to depend on. <laughs> But just think about share, it, you know. It's you shout out to my sister. You know what I'm I know she shout out to my it. brother, you know. <laughs> That's why I but, said, you I don't want to share too much, but I know she listening. <laughs> and I know she's going to call me right after you said that. <laughs> Your sister need love, too. And my thing is, is that sometimes that's the best type of love, that 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 emotional love, because it's like the physical is not getting in the way. The everyday politics are not getting in the way. It's just straight. Your love, her, you know, they love and your love, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, like that's one of the things, like I said, I try not to share too much of that. But yeah, that's one of the things me and him, always, me and my brother always talk about is your relationship can't be anything physical. So it's all about the emotional connection. It's all about the way you talk to her, the way you make her feel. And like she said, the words of affirmation and all of that type of situation. Uh, okay, out of these two now, unavailable emotionally or physically, which category would you fall under or would you have fallen under at some point in any relationship? You ain't got to throw out all your business. I'm put all my business out. No, I'm kidding. Um, emotionally unavailable or physically. I will say emotionally. I feel like I've been in scenarios where um, you young and you really don't know how to fill that person up and give them what they need. So they kind of just like, I don't know, like kind of like, I don't know what you need. You know what I'm saying? And you like, I need this, this, and that. And they're like, well, I, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? They don't know how I'm to, not even equipped to handle that situation. Exactly. And they don't, it's confusing to them. It's confusing to you because it's like, how you not know you be with me? You know me, you know what I, what I give you, you know? Um, so I've been in emotionally unavailable um, relationships. And I think physically unavailable. I've been in distant relationships, but I feel like even with that, the worst was the emotionally unavailable because of the distance, See, the like problem, you said. The problem with that uh, is, like you said, when you're talking young, you're not. Pre- most people are not perceptive at 22 or at 19. Like you saying, like, yeah, you know what I provide for you, but he might not because he's probably not paying attention. Even if you turn it the other way, she's probably not paying attention to all the things that he does because you just – you're not even viewing the world that way. Like you don't even have those glasses yet. Like you just, right. you think the world is a party and like, where are we getting yeah. shots from the night? You don't have that mental capacity, you know? And it's just, and I don't blame it. Cause like you said, it's just an age thing, you know? Yeah, you just we, kinda... all get our, we all get our turn to be young and dumb. Right. But yeah, I feel like that may be the worst, um, but shoot, I'm older now. You know, you can, you ain't gotta be physically here no more. <laughs> you can be you say that until it's been two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could go a long time, but I'm just saying, you know, it could be. If you talk in long distance relationship and we physically can't, that's not the same thing as this nigga's laying right here next to you every night. That's true. That's true. Kiana, which one would you fall under? Which category would you be, have been in the past in a relationship, emotionally unavailable or physically unavailable? Get in her business. <laughs> I was definitely like I said, we ain't got to talk about your current situations. We be throwing no, too much information. No, you know? I, I was I'm definitely talking about a long, long time ago. A long time ago, I was emotionally unavailable. Um, you were? I was because you know, growing up, I didn't really get to do too much. So when I got out the house, like I was enjoying life, having fun, talking to this guy, that guy, like and not giving a care in the world. And now that I got older. I realized that I screwed over like some pretty good guys with potential because like I emotionally wise, like I just wasn't there. Like we would meet up, I would be physically available to, you know, the guys, but I just wasn't thinking like that. Right. right. Definitely was emotionally unavailable. I would say mine would definitely be physically. Uh, You just heard my rundown. So, you know, I got a million fucking things going on. (laughs) My days are crazy. Uh, I work doubles damn near every day, triples or quadruples some days. And 
I always got stuff going on. So physically, I'm not there. Or even sometime when I'm physically there, I'm still emotionally not there because now I'm still in the phone and still doing this, that, or whatever, mm -hmm. trying to tie up this loose end or that loose end. Mm -hmm. So I can say I've been... I can say I, I would go with physically because like emotionally, yeah, if you come to me and say that this is wrong or that's wrong, I'm not really an emotional guy. Like I ain't going to cry with you, but it's like, oh, you need to cry. And it's like, I can sit here in the awkward silence while you cry and be like, mm. it's fucked up. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> like, but you know, like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, <laughs> with you. Like I ain't got none of that in me. <laughs> now I feel you. Well, since you're talking about you working a lot and not really being there all the time, what are you doing, cousin, to get to to make that time? You know, for when you are there, are you unplugging a little more, or are you kind of in, like sketching in time? You know, for your family. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, yeah, we on your ass. <laughs> it's a balance. I mean, I, I, I mean, I ain't never run away. I never run away from anything. I'm always keeping a thousand with you. Uh, but I, it's a balance. Like some days it'd be it like, okay, some days it's like, okay, I didn't have to work a double today, so it's like, just put the phone down, and now unless I don't know, I might have to help with the homework tonight, or mm -hmm. we might just sit here and watch Love and Hip Hop or whatever like that, like. I might roll around with the baby. Like it might just be anything, but like a lot of those days I'm on go all day long. Right. Like I said, I'm out of the house before the, I'm out of the house is dark. I might come home and it'd be darker. So right, right. I always got things to do, but it's like, I always try to be like, keep in mind that I'm doing these things to provide for us to make sure that we are good. It's not right. like I'm just, I want you to constantly understand and remember that I'm doing these things for us. It's not like right. I'm just away for away's sake. Some niggas would be away and they just all day sitting at their man crib doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm away because I'm got this hustle or that hustle. Like I'm doing this business or that business, or I got jerseys to order. I got a cleaning job to set up. Like I, I got shit going on. And it's like, right. if we got a moment where I don't have nothing going on, like in those rare occasions, it's like, all right, yeah, we definitely uh, try to do the family thing and set up something for us to do. Even if it's just get in the car and drive the fuck around, like yes. you might just ride to the mall and just walk the fuck around the mall, hit the pretzel store or whatever. Like it's just to have something to do, especially with the Rona and everything being shut the fuck down. Yeah. It just got real hard to move around because my wife was pregnant when all of that happened. So it was like, I don't play oh, wow. games with this shit. Right. My wife a nurse. So Ooh. she's an essential worker. I work, I'm an essential worker too. Like we never stopped working. So it was like, I don't even play these games. I don't even go outside. I ain't been to a birthday party in <laughs> right. two years. Like, right. Niggas play too much. Niggas be too comfortable. Like, oh, so y'all just out yeah, yeah, relax. Relax, <laughs> you know, especially over there in Atlanta. Y'all niggas just cough and sneeze around each other, huh? Okay. <laughs> two coughs is like gunshots for me. Like, it's like, whoa, we're out. out. I'm like, we I'm like, out. Is that a is that a Smith and Wesson? Did a nigga just sneeze <laughs> and coughed? Oh, no. We are out. We definitely are. <laughs> It was we nice. Pulled one, yeah. <laughs> we pulled up the one birthday party, came in. Oh, yeah, here's the gift. Oh, man, this is great. You want a burger? Yeah, I'll take a burger. All right, y'all. We get at y'all. Got to be. You know they said we <laughs> out of here. Like, yeah, it was nice. Right there, 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we but, definitely uh, appreciate, you know, we don't want to take away that you said that you do a lot for your family. And we definitely appreciate that. And at Underground Queens, we're all about promoting that people that are literally grinding from the underground to support their families, to, to support their dreams. And we don't want to make, make it seem like we're taking that away from you. Because like you said, you not out there just, you know, just, you know, fucking around at your home. Playing 2K out. all day. Right. You actually <laughs> out there trying to make it work. But we also promote self-care. And, you know, just like just trying to balance it, like, you know, balance can be impossible sometimes, but just taking that time and like you said, walking around the mall and just spending time amongst each other, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to find a balance, uh, but you got to find a balance because you got to prioritize your family. You can't be exactly. so much about trying to do other shit that you don't have a connection with your kids or with your significant right. other. No, I understand um, that. Since I'm... you brought up the self-care situation and we're about to talk about the underground queens, mm -hmm. 
Moss Point High School. What was going on at Moss Point High School? Moss Point. Shout out to Moss Point right. High School. Okay. That's the house. Stuff a ground here. Um, we are. Oh, yeah. um, I'm, I'm not one of those guys who has you on and hasn't done my homework. Look at you. <laughs> okay. I'm locked in. That's the town we're from. I was born and raised. Keanu transferred um, in middle school around that time frame. And we just grew up off of giving back. And Kiana had this great idea for us to um, give back. But we wanted to give back in a way that was, it was like back to school, you know, kids got paper, kids got pen, you know, kids got the mask and everything. And um, we were just trying to think of some different ways. And we thought about in middle school, you know, kids be musty. <laughs> and kids be needing um <laughs> like care, that high personal care hygiene right like because when you think of the fundraisers and stuff and uh back to school like they give like like you said pencils papers all that like mm-hmm. nobody was really giving stuff like that like little te- the tender love and care that they may need you know during the school days especially like, you have- never know what everybody's situations is exactly, exactly that too you know exactly and yeah. some small little incident like being musty or forgetting, you know, your female hygiene, you know, that can, you know, kids are cruel. So kids will go in on you for not having something, you know. Especially as a young girl, you will get branded for the rest of your life until you yeah. go off to college somewhere else. Because niggas will never let it down at that day in the seventh grade when you just was unprepared to even know how to handle your situation because your mom wasn't uh, physically available, wasn't there to show you how to do this, that, or whatever, or because you thought your little ass was grown and thought you knew how to clean it up. (laughs) Right. And sometimes you misjudge, you know, not to get too TMI, but you misjudge, you know, you get a small one, you need a big one, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's the same thing goes back to, like we was talking about before, where you just don't know, but you don't even know that you don't know right into <laughs> so it's there and you like you know and then like for me just to get personal you know at that moment you don't know like you said you, your mama may didn't teach you that specific thing your mama may didn't teach you like this is what you do this is how often you know a lot of people's parents are working a lot and you know not having that one-on-one time with them and um you think you know until you get to the point where you you know must be or you you know an so incident in happens classroom and like niggas that. start laughing yeah yeah, and that's that brands you for life. Like you said, that's, that's emotional Girl, you go damage. Of, you gotta go now. You gotta go out of town to college. You can become a whole new person. <laughs> Cause you was you musty Martha home, through, that's what through I'm middle school. Saying. But then when you come home Thanksgiving that year, and niggas is hey yo, look at Martha think she <laughs> oh stank ass. <laughs> but yeah, uh, like y'all was saying though, shout out to y'all for doing that uh situation. Oh, it's yeah. one of those things I always say though, uh you gotta be different. You got to find a way to be different because there's too many people doing the same exact thing and you got to yeah. stand out. And like y'all said, everybody's giving out. I, I gave book bags out for back to school before and everybody's giving out pencils, paper, pens and all of that. They can get that from anywhere. What they can't get is a roll of a deodorant, a body wash or some pads or like any of that type of personal care stuff. Like you're saying, that's not always available for them. So salute to y'all for finding that niche and hitting and in, hitting into that one. No, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. And like we said, we just come from a town. It's very, very small, but we we have benefited from just people in the community giving back to us. So, you know, we had to go back and give back to our people. And we probably won't be the last time. We always are constantly thinking about giving back. Even during the pandemic, we had a, a challenge. Remember um, the Queen's Day Off Challenge? Yay. And um, <laughs> you want to tell them about it, Kim? That was, that was good. That was good. No, but I just wanted to say, like, he's right about that and um it was discouraging at first I was discouraged I was like how are we going to be able to do something like this but it just goes to show when God gives you the vision to act on it but we did have a Queen's Day challenge because we are big on self-care so pretty much we were just encouraging and trying to motivate people to take some time off because we do wear a lot of hats in life and have a lot of different things going on and it's okay to rest sometimes because if you don't rest when it's needed, like your body will just force you to do so. So we were just encouraging folks just to take some time off to do self-care things. So it was and you know how good. and you know That's how we good. are. We gotta I'll have go some type like of incentive. <laughs> so we gave out free groceries. Um, we gave out uh, HelloFresh groceries for a week for whoever 
took a day off and then we just drew names of the um, listeners who took a day off and they hashtagged it and we provided free groceries at your door for a week. That's what I'm saying. Shouts out to the Queens. This is why I brought that up. You got to you gotta put stuff like that. You got to bring that to light. You got to let people know about that. Like it's one of those things where it's again, it's a catch 22 where it's like you want to record it so that other people see it and maybe it inspires somebody else to do it. You don't want to record it so that you're belittling the person who needs this help or like trying to make yourself look a certain way because you're doing this. It's like, it's all in your perception, I guess, oh, uh, yeah. who the person is and how they're going to look at that. Because me personally, I do a lot of shit for people and it's like, I don't want no credit for that. Like, all I right. bought somebody something and it's like, why? I didn't ask you to put that on Instagram. Like, I didn't do that because right. I wanted you yeah, to tag me on that. Instagram for doing that. Mm-hmm. Like, if I wanted somebody to know, I'd have told them. But certain situations like this where you're doing like a give back type situation for the community, those are the type of things that you need people to know about because you want to inspire somebody else to do that, whether it be in your own town or be somewhere fuckwhere else. So mm-hmm. salute to y'all for that, definitely. Thank you. Um, and like Kiana now, said, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like Kiana said, but, we, you know, we, we're in place where like we're not in the, we're not like this big showtime podcast and you know, we come from this little town that never, we probably the only podcast in the whole state or probably in the South Mississippi anyway. So we're like, how are we going to give something back when we, you know, are so small? And it's just like, exactly, you know, that's, you give back no matter what you, you, um, as you climb, you reach back and you pull up. Right. No matter how big or small, like every donation counted, like, yeah. And it 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 was amazing, like to it see was. people actually want to be a part of that. Like, hey, you know, to our team. listeners, yeah. You know? So that's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's what we. That's our whole motive behind. We just want to try to bless people, and like you said, bring people on that aren't in the spotlight, you know, and bring them up from underground. So that's us. All right, I got some notes from the last episode that I wanted to throw at y'all. Something okay. real quick. What's the last thing you wrote down in your journal, Kiana? Um, the last thing that I wrote down in my journal, my journal is <laughs> right here. Being honest, um, mm-hmm. the last thing I wrote down was about this episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of what the did notes. You write down. Okay, come on. There we go. Uh, yep, I was writing down some thoughts about being um emotionally unavailable. And I got it right here. I'm going to tell you word for word. You're listening. Damn, look. We always journaling. We always do. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Let me oh, something y'all brought up right on here. the episode. That's why I said it. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's write this so, one down and see what she say. So I was talking about um, being emotionally and physically unava- unavailable and how the two of those are conjoined at the hip and how being physically unavailable would have been worse if you're not showing up and your heart's not in it for being emotionally unavailable my notes are all everywhere but that's pretty much what i just jotted down before I mean, here. Together, every everybody's notes make sense to them and they might not make so <laughs> make sense to the next person so when somebody would ask you school, like yo let me see your papers like you ain't gonna understand this shit. <laughs> you're, not <laughs> gonna understand that. <laughs> you're not gonna understand my handwriting first of all <laughs> all right now this one is for you kiara okay what's the title of your book because you said your your journal can turn into a book. So what's the title of that book? <laughs> oh, cousin did his oh, research. I know that he was locked in, huh? Yeah, he was listening. Uh, oh, you don't want to hear my new title of my book. Um, because it's it's um <laughs> baby dad ain't shit. No, I'm kidding. Um <laughs> I mean if that's, that's what my... it is, that's what it is. <laughs> no, it's just um, you know, I've you know, in different life, you have like peaks and you know, and valleys. And um, through going through the valleys, you know, people be like, why, why, why? And um, it's just kind of like finding peace within that valley because everybody's going to have a valley, no matter what it is. It could be your health. It could be, you know, finding a job or a relationship, you know, and it's just sometimes, you know, life can get to you and you just have to find that type of peace. And I feel like sometimes in life, people go and find things that are unhealthily there to cope with what they're going through so whether smoking or drinking you know and those things are cool with me you know do what you do but sometimes it can creep in to where it's like it's a casual thing then it's like it's an everyday thing then it's like i need this so i can I need this operate. to get to my, yeah i need this when i get up in the morning yeah and it's so hard because like you're saying when you're going through stuff you ain't trying to go journal 
you're trying to go either bust somebody upside the head or you're trying to go calm down go have a drink go take a shot or two or whatever like that and um me walking through that journey you know of just trying to find positive things is writing more is meditating more which i have you know i'm from mississippi you know meditate what yoga what you know but it's just trying something trying different things um unorthodox so i guess the title of that book will be to be you know through the valley is trying to find that river you know okay all right before we wrap this episode up episode 40 with the underground queens i'm a brand new listener to the underground queens what am i expecting and i want to throw that one at kiana what am i expecting when i come to the podcast well you can expect you know motivation encouragement and we always are as transparent as possible we let our listeners know like we don't know what the hell we doing, okay? But we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out together. That's life. Tell them, cousin. We're going to figure it we out. figure it out some way or another. We don't know how, but we are going to figure it out. And we just want everyone to know that it's okay to feel like that. Like, you don't know it all. Like, we always say we're not experts. We give our um, life experiences and sharing with others. And hopefully we're in hopes that it can encourage somebody else that may be going through the same thing. So even if it's just one person that we're helping, that's what it's all about for us. So you can get that positive vibe from our podcast. You might hear a scripture. You might hear a boosty or a webby lyric. You might hear a... a... I got one one for you. We're going (laughs) to close it out with this one. Oh, Lord. What's that? that I have to listen to if I'm coming to the podcast. What you coming to get? That's what I'm trying to figure out. What you coming to get? What's your vibe? What you trying to get? Laugh? You trying to get some motivation? You tell me. If this is a brand new listener and you saying, okay, if you new to the Underground Queens, this is the episode that will give you the best depiction of us. A best depiction? What? Paint the best picture of us. Um, this is the one that I really like. This is my favorite. Dang, I, my favorite. You gotta, come, you gotta come here prepared to know how to hustle podcast. I you. see, cause um, I I do every podcast we record. It instantly becomes my favorite. Um, right. because okay, it, so you can say that. Then the last one is my favorite one. What was that? Imposter but Syndrome. but I feel like our self care. I think is let me ease your mind episode. That was the best one. We talked about okay. self care. Um and maybe I wish like hell. I wish like hell. That was the okay. them two top um two top ones. Cause mm-hmm. you get a little bit of education, you know, but you also get you see the funny and vulnerable side of us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. That's what I saw. What I need right there. You put you gotta put the listeners on to something new and let them know this is the one you need to click. So all right, ladies, I appreciate y'all coming on. That's episode 40 of the How to Hustle podcast. Don't forget, How to Hustle seminars are going right now. The How to Hustle seminars are going now. If you're not live on there, you can be sold to archives. <laughs> Appreciate y'all hitting the button. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.